My name is Kurt Stege. I am the Chief Technology Officer at Thundercat Tech. Hello, my name is Kurt Kern. I'm CTO for Americas for NetApp. The government should start with a good problem where AI can make a significant difference. And by that, I mean find a problem that cannot be solved by traditional analytics or model-based simulations. What we're seeing is that there's a tremendous increase in processing power in these GPU architectures. You know, that increase in processing power gives us a tremendous amount of capability to advance the science around of artificial intelligence. Now, at the same time, that also creates an incredible pressure on the IO subsystems to respond to the increased bandwidth demands to feed all that needed to the compute complex. And so we've announced some joint solutions in conjunction with Ampere that, that will address that challenge. Just last year, the White House issued an executive order announcing, you know, the American AI initiative, you know, this along with efforts all over the government in the space, including $2 billion funding from DARPA for AI Next in 2018. Regardless of where you are in the federal government, there's, there's going to be something going on in the field of AI and machine learning. Many of these, uh, you know, proof of concept investigations begin directly in cloud versus explore the best of breed solution. And so, you know, while that may be a quick and easy solution, what we find is that the transitioning operations often represents a challenge. And so, you know, issues arise related to data stewardship, ethics, security, and uh, sometimes we see agencies struggle with unpredictable costs, right? And these all combine to threaten an AI project on transition operations. And so what we find is that, you know, if you consider that once an AI project goes live, it's popularity will grow. And then that service has to deal with more data, more users, potentially higher outbound traffic from the CSP, you know, based on that increased demand. After the 2019 White House order I mentioned, there was a follow-up in 2020, which starts to talk about all the other things that were out there. But one of the things that I think that gets missed in that space, and, and being a former science teacher myself, I try to always bring up in, in many of these things, is the fact that everybody hears AI and thinks about like sci-fi warnings, machines taking over the world, losing jobs and things like that. However, there's a huge opportunity for institutions and kids out there as well to learn the skill sets needed to run these type of environments at scale. The U.S. government has the new cloud smart strategy that replaced the cloud first strategy. And that strategy provides more guidance surrounding security, procurement, and the necessary workforce skills to foster cloud adoption and implementation. AI has a lot of similarities, right? And it will have an even larger impact on you know, the modernization aspects of the IT or, or cloud consumption. I think it should move quickly from project to program. And in that vein, in some cases, I think it's gonna require policy changes so that the AI systems can operate at the right level and generate the right decisions and do that in real time. And in many cases, those processes have traditionally been governed by human oversight. And so, you know, it's gonna require a combination of multiple changes in order to make AI a common entity operating government agencies. It seems to be more in the neighborhood of, I would say, workload modernization and optimization where you're doing your work. There are AI and machine learning op opportunities in all types of scenarios, whether you're talking about Amazon or Azure. When you talk about uh, open source software, it's the same as in the other pieces that are out there around automation, around DevOps. Open source software is going to be a large part of what you work with. Every single AI platform, every single AI group is going to be utilizing a lot of the open source tools that are out there, tools like TensorFlow and Torch are universally supported across all the different platforms. We're also seeing a proliferation of, you know, ISV AI software also being produced and it's you know, tailored for categories of you know, vertical industries like automotive, financial sector, healthcare, pharma, genomics. But for the last three, you know, all of those are really top of mind for everyone that's dealing with the COVID crisis. At NetApp, we've been bringing together best of breed software. First, we have what we call our flex pods, right? They're engineered now to include NVIDIA's uh, latest GPU cards, and these systems are being used for scale out AI workloads as well as you know, HPC solutions. We've got similar technology in our HCI systems, and in that, we're seeing good success with uh, delivering high performance VDI services, which have been in high demand for the work from home orders that are happening across all the agencies. We also uh, announced uh, roughly two 
years ago, our ONTAP AI solution, which uses the NVIDIA DGX supercomputer, and that has deep software integration, much like Kurt had discussed earlier, with open source software like TensorFlow and Jupyter Notebooks. And then we also just announced uh, on the heels of the GTC conference, a solution integration with Aquasio that adds serverless computing and orchestration to the platform. And then finally, we're working with key software players uh, with companies like Allegro AI, Parabricks, and H2O AI, which do a really interesting set of capabilities around genomics, scientific data processing, and then uh, image recognition. We actually worked with NetApp to, de to develop a replicated storage across the country for agencies. We've also built solutions around HPC and AI, and we're, we're actually talking with some folks right now about some of the, the storage components to some of the larger supercomputers and, and AI computers that are out there.